Good morning everyone and it's good to uh, meet with you again online. I'm doing the announcements from the office this morning uh, because uh, I wanted to get the, the most up to date ones because we had already recorded the service uh, yesterday. Uh, could I remind you of the of the prayer line? Uh, the number is 07874 008473 and if you have any prayer requests or uh, situations you want prayed for just send in a text on that number. You, uh, we still need to meet our United Appeal target, uh, so uh, if you could keep that in mind over these next weeks before the end of the year, uh, if you wanted to uh, give some donations to that. Each Tuesday uh, between 11 and 12, the church uh, is still open to receive uh, free will offerings and also donations to the United Appeal or the Christmas Appeal, which will be, be coming up as well. You can also make donations to uh, the storehouse and also the Salvation Army uh, Christmas uh, present appeal. Uh, now this Tuesday will be the last opportunity to do uh, for the storehouse and uh, for the uh, Christmas presents uh, before Christmas. On Wednesday night, uh, the 16th at 8 o'clock, we're going to go carl singing uh, around the tree in the church grounds. So please come along and uh, we'll keep socially distant, yes. Uh, but we will sing some carols and if you can download the words of the most popular carols that you know uh, and uh, bring them with you that would be great but it'll be good to see as many people as possible and we'll, we'll meet together uh, yes socially distant uh, but we'll enjoy each other's company as we sing some carols on Christmas morning there will be uh, no church service in the building but there will be an online message and also Christmas greetings and for that, I wonder, could as many people as possible uh, send me in uh, Christmas greetings uh, by video or, or send in some pictures. We already have some in, but we want to uh, try and get as uh, many people to send Christmas wishes to each other as possible. So we're going to set up a uh, Christmas online greetings 2020. So send me in videos. Uh, Send them in uh, by send me in your pictures uh, by email or text or WhatsApp, and uh, if you could get them into me by the twenty first of uh, December, that would be great, and then we'll have them ready for Christmas morning. Make them as funny and uh, creative as you can. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing all your Christmas jumpers and your Santa hats and everything else that's festive. So email them to me. Or send them into my, my on onto my telephone number, uh, my mobile number, and that would be great. We are also going to uh, send uh, Christmas cards to the community. These are ready to go. We have them in envelopes, and also we're still looking for some volunteers uh, to do that. Uh, if you can help in that, obviously the more we have, uh, the less work it will be for everyone. Uh, so if you feel like you can help in that way, would you please get in touch uh, with me or again, uh, Brian Morrison, you can email him and let him know. And the uh, last announcement is the uh, Christmas on your doorstep project. This is something that the Embrace uh, girls have, have set up. Uh, they want to uh, set up uh, just this project so we can encourage each other. Uh, if you think of uh, someone within your church family, and someone in the community and then maybe also a young person and just leave uh, some sort of encouragement on their doorstep. Uh, it could be a, a book or a bunch of flowers or a box of chocolates or, or just keep it simple but just to show uh, that you are thinking of them uh, and that uh, you want to encourage them. Uh, if you need any details about that, contact Heather or uh, if you want a list of names of people who you could actually leave something on the doorstep, get in touch with Heather. And please, as many people as possible, uh, get involved so we can encourage uh, as many as we can uh, in, in our church family. That should be all the announcements, uh, so we'll uh, just head off into the church. The call to worship this morning is found in Psalm 40. And we'll read uh, the first three verses. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. 
Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. When David was writing this psalm, he was waiting for something. Today in our instant society, we don't like waiting. Everything must be done as soon as possible. We want the parcel at the door to arrive the next day or even before that. We want an answer to uh, our emails right away. And we like our coffee instantly. We tend to rush things. But this Advent season, well, it asks us to wait. Not for the, the baby Jesus that the wise men and God's people of old had to wait for, but we are waiting for the second coming of Jesus. But as we wait for that coming, or as we wait on any guidance from God, we should wait patiently. We should be searching for God's timing and his wisdom. The second coming will usher in the great prize of heaven, of heaven, something that we all should look forward to and praise God for. This piece is called Child in the Manger and is to the tune of Morning Has Broken. Join with me to sing. As we come now in prayer at this part of our service, we, we just want to take time to, to thank God and praise Him, and also just to uh, tell Him about our, our mistakes and the things that we have done wrong. Lord, thank You that You are gracious and compassionate. Thank You that You are slow to anger and rich in love. You are patient with our mistakes, and You forgive our sins. Lord, help us to, to walk in the rhythms of your grace. Lord, forgive our impatience with everyday life. Lord, we rush around and we get irritated at delays. We get frustrated with things and people which do not move at the pace that we would like. Lord, forgive our impatience with answers to prayer. Sometimes we treat you like a vending machine and we come with a list of our requests and expect to get answered right away. Lord, we assume to know your will and what is best for us. But Lord, help us to trust in your timing. 
and in your guidance. Lord, forgive our impatience. Lord, help us to follow the plan and the purposes that you have for each of us. Because we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Morning, boys and girls. Well, it's only 12 days to go, and I'm sure you can't wait. But I wonder, uh, are you being patient? Perhaps there's some of your presence already around the tree, and maybe you're taking a wee sneaky look. Maybe you're pulling back a little bit of the wrapping paper just to see what is inside. Don't tell anybody, but, but I've been doing that. Or perhaps maybe you've eaten all your selection boxes already. Maybe you've eaten all the chocolate out of it. But it is very hard to be patient, and it's very hard uh, to wait when, you, when you're so excited. But God tells us that he wants us to be patient. He wants us to be patient with one another. I know sometimes we get annoyed with uh, maybe our brothers and sisters or our friends. Uh, we get a wee bit frustrated with them. But God wants us to be patient with each other. And he also wants us to be patient and wait for him to guide us. And wait for him uh, to uh, show us what he wants us to do in life. Sometimes we just want to go ahead and get things done very quickly and just do what we want to do ourselves. But God tells us that, uh, well, he knows us best and he knows what's best for us and he's got plans and purposes for us and he wants to guide us. So he tells us to wait for him and let him show us what he wants us to do. So as, we, as you grow up, uh, there'll be many things that God will want you to do and there'll be many opportunities. Uh, but hopefully... Uh, you'll be able to wait and allow God uh, to guide you in whatever you do. Well, I hope that uh, you're patient enough to wait uh, and not open your presents on Christmas Day. I'm sure there's some presents already be below the tree and I'm sure you'll get lots more. Uh, but uh, try and be patient and uh, also be patient and allow God to look after you. Our uh, reading this morning uh, is found in uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, and we're going to read at verse 3, and we are thinking about uh, waiting patiently for the second coming of Jesus. So let's read from verse 3. Above all, you must understand that in the last days scoffers will come, scoffing and following their own evil desires. They will say, where is this coming he promised? Ever since our ancestors died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. But they deliberately forget that long ago, by God's word, the heavens came into being, and the earth was formed out of water, by water. By these waters also the world of that time was deluged and destroyed. And by the same word, the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and the destruction of the ungodly. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire and the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire, and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation. Amen. Over the last couple of weeks, we uh, have uh, been uh, looking at what Advent means, and uh, it's a time of waiting. 
Uh, God's people were waiting expectantly and uh, with anticipation for the first coming of, of Jesus as he came uh, as a baby. And last week we were thinking about the second coming of Jesus and uh, how we should behave uh, as followers of God while uh, we are waiting for the, the second coming. Today we want to look again at that and uh, we want to look at, uh, well, being patient while we're waiting. And uh, it seems that uh, 2,000 years is a long time to wait. And we want to look at, at why, why has it taken so long. I wonder, are you patient? Uh, when it comes to uh, the Christmas presents, can you wait until Christmas Day before you open them? Or do you have to have a sticky peek before that? Or what about uh, the Advent calendar? Now, if you have an Advent calendar, are you able to eat just one piece of chocolate? each day or do you have to scoff the whole lot in one go? And how long were you able to wait before you had to put up your Christmas decorations? Uh, were you able to wait until December or, had you, or did you put them up long before that? The Christmas decorations seemed to go up much earlier this year and uh, they, they, there were some even up uh, as far back as the beginning of, of November. But we are told uh, that uh, we have to wait patiently for the, the second coming uh, last week we talked about the second coming, uh, the fact that Jesus promises, uh, the Bible has promised that Jesus will, will return and bring the fullness of his kingdom to this earth. But if we're honest, we wonder, well, why, why are we waiting so long? Why has this taken so long? Perhaps we struggle with the idea of the second coming. Perhaps you've heard some teaching that is scary or even confusing. And some people we know are, are really obsessed with the, the second coming and their, their interpretations are quite extreme and that can put us off. It's been 2,000 years since Jesus returned to heaven uh, so it's understandable that uh, well, perhaps we, uh, we'll, we wonder will God ever return and put the earth right. If you feel like that, well you're not alone uh, because we read there that the, the early Christians, they were waiting and they were anticipating that that Christ would come back in their lifetime. But that didn't happen. And then they, they began to lose hope. And the, the scoffers came and they said, well, well where, when is this second coming? We read that uh, earlier on. Uh, they said, well, where is this second coming that has been promised? Ever since our ancestors died, everything goes on as it has, uh, as it has since the beginning of creation. Perhaps this sounds for familiar to you. Uh, perhaps you've heard uh, some non-Christians say, well, uh, what about the, the second coming? When, when will it happen? Surely 2,000 years is a, is a long time to wait. When Peter heard uh, the, the question from the scoffers about the second coming, well, where is this second coming? He answered, this, he answered it this way. He said in verse 9, The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise. As some understand slowness, instead he is patient. Do you know anyone who ate, eats ice cream in a hurry? And they bolt it down as if it was a race. And then they, they look around and ask, Well, why is everybody else so slow? But of course the answer they get is that, uh, Well, we're not slow. We're enjoying every bite. Uh, we're not slow. We're just being patient. God is not slow in his return. Uh, he is being patient. And Peter tells us that God has a vital reason for why he is holding back his return, why, is he, why he, he is being patient. It says here in 2 Peter 3 and verse 9, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Peter knew that the final, uh, that the return of Jesus uh, would come with judgment on the earth. Uh, when Jesus died on the cross and with his resurrection, uh, that meant that he was providing salvation for us. And we, if we believe in him, have, well, we have no fear of that judgment. But entering into God's kingdom does require us to believe in him and to come to repentance. God already knows uh, 
that that day will come, that that day of judgment and the second coming of Jesus will come. But this verse suggests, and Peter suggests, that God wants to give everyone as much time as possible to come to repentance, to follow him. There are many who still don't believe, but God wants to give every opportunity for them to give their lives over to him. The judgment will come. God's judgment will come. Again, we read in Peter, but the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will dis disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire and the earth and everything done it, and it will be laid bare. In keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth. This is the same new heaven and new earth that uh, John was given a vision of in, in Revelation, and we talked about that a couple of weeks ago as well. Both Peter and Revelation use the word uh, the Greek word, which means, uh, the Greek word new, which means having uh, a new quality about it. Something that's uh, been remade or, or something that has been renewed. It's the same word that is used uh, when uh, uh, the transformation of, of someone becoming a Christian is described. They become a new creation. Uh, the, the old sinful nature is broken and uh, has gone and uh, the new the new creation has come. So God is not planning to put the earth in the bin and start again. Uh, he is planning to refine it and remake it and renew it. Uh, God's judgment is a fire that will, will refine the earth until only, only the pure gold is left. So Peter is painting a picture here that that God's final judgment will, will burn up all that is unjust and all that is impure and all that is ungodly. And the old order of things uh, will be destroyed. And it will come to a new order of things, the plan that uh, the original intention of God for a, a, a new and perfect earth. When you're waiting for something... Uh, it changes when you know what you're expecting it changes how you wait a child waiting for a christmas patient a christmas present uh, will wait differently than a child waiting for the dentist uh, we are not waiting for uh, an endless sermon in the skies or uh, an endless church service or sitting about on the clouds. We are waiting for the restoration of heaven and earth. With every, with every good thing made new and there being an abundant, an abundant life for all. Knowing what God will do when Jesus returns up to change how we live today. We should be waiting expectantly. We should be wanting that return, but we should be also patient and we should behave in this way. Since everything of the old order of things will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought, to be live, you ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. As we live waiting for this second coming, we should, yes, really be looking forward to it and expectantly, waiting for that new order of things. But we should also wait patiently. And we should also be living our lives in such a way that we also can give uh, an opportunity for others to see what God is doing for us. 
We should live in ways that please God, which imitate Jesus, which work for the good of his creation, which build community and society, and we should seek justice and fairness. We should talk to others about the kingdom of God. We should communicate to others the importance that it is to have that relationship with God. And then indeed, as it suggests, that that will actually speed the coming of the second coming. Jesus is patient, or God is patiently waiting for as many to turn to him as possible. So as we live on this earth, let us play our part and encourage others to get to know Jesus and to look forward to this new heaven, this remade, this renewed heaven, where there will be that um, abundant inheritance for us. So let us, let us believe, let us uh, accept the gift of Jesus, uh, not only as a baby, but as someone who gave their lives for us uh, so that we could be saved and be part of that, that uh, new order of things to come. As we uh, pray now, uh, let's use this prayer to come before God, just to be still before him. Lord, where we are fearful, we ask for your calm. Where we are rushing about, guide us into your unhurried pace. When we are restless, help us to know your patience. And when we are anxious, help us to breathe in your peace. Lord God, as we breathe in your peace, help us to breathe out our anxiety. As we breathe in your patience, help us to breathe out restlessness. And as we breathe in your unhurried pace, help us to breathe out our rushing. And as we breathe in your calm, dear Lord, help us to breathe out any fear that is within us. Lord, fill us with your rest. Fill us with your quiet. Fill each of us with the calming of your Holy Spirit. Because we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Tell out my soul the greatness of the Lord. Tell out my soul the greatness of the Lord. Unnumbered blessings in my spirit's voice tender to me. The promise of his word in God my Savior shall my heart dream. 
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen.